Let's do it. Number one, Giggs has got a new album coming out. Anyone else hyped? I am super, super, super hyped. Um, I've always, again, I think uh, most people in London, for the most part, have always had a very strong connection to Giggs. When um, the whole SN1, South London, rap, hip hop kind of scene came out through the back end of Grime. When that was sort of dying, it kind of gave it a new resurgence. Loads of people came out from that crew, like Young's Teflon, a bit of Crepton Conan a bit later. But Giggs and all those people, and Sheik Carleone, and Sheik Sh- 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 Carleone? Yeah, Sheik Sh- 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 Carleone. There's a few others as well in that kind of group were the first to kind of popularize or bring about. Oh, and obviously my guys, Roadside G's. Um, they were one of the one of the most former groups, but it all came out from that kind of South London bubble, right? That kind of aggressive drill based um, rap. Do you know what I mean that was very much um, based in real actions or real activities that were going on in around the area at the time? And of course, it was a fucking scary time. But usually, the most scariest areas, you know, you think about uh, New York in the seventies and eighties. You think about Berlin in the in the early nineties. The most scariest places were always the most interesting. So in that kind of scary fucked up area. Era. loads of amazing music came out loads of amazing artists came out there was amazing producers blah, blah blah some of them went on to bigger better things some of them kind of fell by the wayside but one of the people kind of flying the flag and some of this kind of been a permanent fixture within the uk rap scene for the most part has been gigs he's gone for an interesting career you know just when he got signed he got locked up for a while then he came back out again and somehow managed to pick up his momentum and it looks like when he came back out in my opinion again i'm not sure what anyone else thinks but i think prior to him going out it kind of felt like he was going to get whitewashed by the industry the industry was going to kind of put him in a blazer uh make him change his name to i don't know um uh fucking giga factory or some shit you know you happen to get gets right get my I'm, I'm even calling him gets it's been so long but get one of my favorite grammars of all time that was something that really hurt me when he had to when he finally got signed he finally was trying to pop into the mainstream you know because back then especially especially a few years ago, there wasn't really a blueprint. I don't think it existed. We didn't have a, a big enough scene. I don't think kids cared enough because you see people like Hedy One nowadays, right? You see videos of girls, um, usually white girls in fucking far-flung places in the UK, uh, rapping along to one of Hedy One's songs. And you think, oh shit, right? Like these guys are winning, doing exactly, doing everything they want, like without compromising, right? They're not having to change themselves, not having to fucking relax their hair, put on blue contact lenses and do some bullshit in order to kind of appeal to um, the middle of the UK, right? They can appeal to them by just saying, speaking the truth. And it's something that's captured the youth uh, market for the most part. But back then, when Getz and all those guys were around, even Wiley, even during the Roll Deep days, and maybe sometimes a few, maybe in the early stages when Skepta was around the first couple of albums, even though he was still did a good job of kind of maintaining who he was in the public eye, I think uh, Getz kind of suffered because he came around at a time when, you know, there was a lot of confusion. A lot of those guys thought they needed to be on top of the pops. They needed to be on uh, BBC One Extra, all those kind of things in order to have a successful career, right? Maybe the internet wasn't what it was now. All, loads of things that happened in those kind of areas that kind of led to it and obviously somebody like a gets who i imagine is quite independently minded quite strong willed was convinced into changing his name from ghetto which is probably one of the greatest rap names out there if you think about it, if you think about it right considering how he is and how he goes on um he had to then change his fucking gets which is like ugh, you know of course he says that it it, it it was it, it was how he referred to himself in rap sometimes in in abbreviated sense but you know for him to change his name it was a fucking shame and it felt like gigs have to do the same thing when he went to prison but when he came back out he kind of it seemed like he doubled down on who he was and just gave us un, unadulterated unfiltered uh gigs and sn1 kind of vibes and obviously um the co-sign from drake um obviously helped things as well but overall i think in the uk his le- legacy was fucking solidified and i was a big fan of his and i think the last album actually landlord there was a few tra- it was quite different from subs i was obviously done he had a really good mix of like you know uh sound things that you traditionally associate with with gigs and just like you know commercial things that might work in terms of the top 100 or whatever um charts people um uh, pay attention to so i remember i think he had a track with the neo was that locked though was that locked though dun 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 was it locked was that uh yeah i think that was locked though um what album is lingua what what track is what what album is lingua on is lingua on the mixtape warm to them might be on that right is Lingo on one to them? Yeah, it is. So he's got Lingo. So yeah. So imagine he had a very, very, very good run. Gigs, I think. I'll get it up here on the screen. So Gigs studio albums. You got here Landlord, which I was a fan of, but that came out in 2016. So that's a good little that's a good little back to back that he's done so far. And then and then um Wipe to them was sort of like I say a mixtape, right? For the most part, right? Mixtape that went number one, well, number two, number two as well there. So on Landlord, you've got some pretty solid tracks here on Landlord, right? 
Um, what did I love? I lo- of, of, of course, Whipping and Scourging was a big track. Just Swerving, The Process, I really love. Lockdown, I love. Slipping, I love. Savage, I love. Lyrical Combat, I love. Lyrical Combat kind of introduced me to Cass is Dead. If you're not sure Cass is Dead is, I recommend you check him out. Really, really great um, UK artist. Um, but that kind of introduced me to him. Um, and that was amazing. So check that one out. And then after that, he had Wap to them, right? Wap to them. Wamp to them, right? And um, this was a nice one too. Uh, you got Gully Niggas in there. You got Ultimate Gangster, Straight Lifestyle, Times Ticking, Lingua. Obviously, one of my favorite tracks, a track that I play all the time when I'm DJing. Um, obviously, Outsides with DWE and Footsie, that was a big track. Uh, Peligro as well with Dave. So, awesome, 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 awesome album. So, now he's got a new one coming out, and I think he just put out. Um, I think he's put out a trailer for it, which I haven't watched. I'm going to watch it live, man. Live, live, live with my podcast listeners. So let's check this out here. Let's see if I can get it up there. Um, I think it's called, what is it called? The Boss or something? What is it called? Uh, so the other one's called Landlord. So this, what's this one called? It's a continuation of, um, what do you call it? Cancel, <laughs> uh, cancel at- attendance nicknames or whatever so yeah it's called big bad album trailer number one right so let's check this out and see what my man gigs is saying and obviously and also you know what as well he survived without having to change his name like completely because obviously ryan gigs big player but i think if ryan gigs was english maybe he'd have to change his name right ryan gigs being welsh no one gives a fuck about Wales here in the uk but he never really had to he never he never had to change his name which is something i always thought he would have to like abbreviate his name or have it you know G dot I dot G, you know, kind of like a will I am sort of fashion, right? Maybe I thought he had to do that kind of thing, um, but he didn't have to do that, so that was awesome. So anyway, enough about that. Let's check this out. Nice. So in this video, he's what is he like a King Kong character, right? Gigs athleticism is on zero point five though, isn't it? Fucking hell! Look how hard that was it to jump that. <laughs> Gigs on running it. Magic Gigs running. He must look mad running. <laughs> that SN One chain is fucking bad, isn't it? That's like our, that's the UK Rockefeller chain, isn't it? SN One chain, no? Cause it's a very precise thing it's only you know it's only for people from a particular set obviously from south for the most part getting that chain is a big look streets of london as a giant figure continues to cause destruction carnage like we've never seen before in the capital city oh, madam oh what have you seen he's he's just so nice, big that's a model isn't it? i forgot her name oh. nice there you have it people so running big and bad lives, <laughs> scared as the authorities try and tackle a menace in the capital city Yes, Gigs. Sick. Yo, this comes out and this flipping album smashes. Imagine what Wireless is going to be like when he performs this. Or album launch, whatever, right? Hopefully, it does have a big one, Boiler Room or something. I'm definitely getting myself down on that one. Slaps a helicopter out from the air. Are we going to hear those bars, you reckon? Slap a helicopter up in the air. Call me King Kong or something, right? We're going to hear that. Big bad, can't wait to see that. The album outward looks a bit dead though, but the, the trailer is fucking awesome. Cannot wait to see that album coming out. So that's coming out when? It says in the video, does it say in the video? It's just so big and bad. It's so big and bad. February 22nd. So it's February 22nd, we're going to see uh, <laughs> Gigs. That's awesome. I love that ad clip actually. It's just so big and bad. So yeah, Gigs album coming out February 22nd. Watch out for that. I'm a big fan of his. If you're not a big fan, get on that train, man. Get on that train. There's enough time, enough room for us. So hopefully album launch, we'll see it sometime before that. I'm assuming end of January, maybe beginning mid, beginning of Feb. Might be a boiler room thing. Might be his own thing. It might be an announcer. It might be like a little pop-up thing, similar to what Skepta did underneath that bridge. And sure, this album might be cool. But whatever it is, I'm putting myself on the list because I'm a huge Gigs fan. One of the, one of the hugest out there, actually. Oh.